In the Christian Bible, God says, if you don't know me, I don't know you. And I think those simple words sum up a spiritual death, that when the person who has chosen to ignore God and is standing before God on Judgment Day, God will just simply say, you didn't know me and I don't know you. That is a spiritual death. I just say that as a comment. My wife and I were walking through the streets of Dubai and we were past a CD and a book about Islam. I've moved from Singapore. I'm British, but I've lived in Singapore for 23 years. I've rubbed shoulders with many Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists. And I'm pleased to say I've learned more about my fellow mankind having been away from Britain than ever I would have learned in Britain. This thing that you're doing tonight is wonderful. And I wish I had had this many years before. One of the signal absences in this treatise on Islam was nobody talked about the devil, nobody talked about sin. And I was puzzled because in Christianity it is always constantly the fight between good and bad. In the Old Testament, which was the first thing that I learned, there were a lot of similarities with Islam. People are slaughtering cows and sheep and goodness knows what to atone for their sins. And the more I, I gather, the worse the sin, the more animals that were killed. And in the big temple courtyards, there were just vast areas for burning these animals on the altars. Why has that stopped? If Islam is drawing on a lot of the Old Testament things, what I know as the Old Testament, Abraham had a wife called Sarah. How do you know this? You know it because it was recorded. Would you agree, therefore, in the New Testament that the uh, people who wrote and recorded those things, are they telling the truth? I'm asking you a question which I hope you'll answer in a minute. Are they telling the truth or is this made up? And therefore, why are we not even today slaughtering animals left, right and center to atone for our sins because there is another forgiveness? The last point I want to make is I was absolutely amazed I learned this in Singapore, that there were historians at the time Jesus was observed to have been crucified who were not Christians. There was no reference to what religion they had, but they recorded that this man Jesus lived. Yes, we know he lived. You acknowledge as Muslims that he lived. But he was observed to have been crucified. And it is recorded in the Bible by the same people who I'm asking you, do you believe that Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John existed? Was this a made-up story? Because if all the other things have been observed, Jesus said this, or Jesus said that in the red writing in the Bible, um, where is the line between something happened and something didn't happen? I'm sorry, it's a long question. No, 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 I answer the question, the brother asked a very good question. He said that in my talk, for example, I mentioned that Abraham had another wife by the name of Sarah. May peace be upon them. How did I come to know? From the Bible. So he's asking me that many things of Islam, there are similarities in the Old Testament. Now when we go to the New Testament, how do I pick and choose? Why don't I believe in the writers? Brother, anything, whether it's part of the Old Testament or New Testament, whether it's part of a Hindu scripture or any other scripture, I as a Muslim, I consider, as far as I'm concerned, I'll come up with the other later on. As far as, as the Muslim is concerned, this Quran is my Furqan. Furqan is the criteria to judge right from wrong. And a beloved Prophet Muhammad said, Balligu anni walo aya. Propagate even if you know one verse. And there is no problem if you quote from the scriptures of the Ahli Kitab. Now, as far as the scriptures of the Jews and Christians are concerned, there are three rules to be followed. Rule number one. If it matches with the Quran, we have got no objection in accepting that portion to be the word of God. Point number one. Point number two. If it goes against the Quran, we reject it. It cannot be the word of God. 
irrespective who wrote it paul matthew mark john whoever rule number 1 if it matches with the quran because this has been proved to be the word of god as far as we are concerned scientifically everything even a logical person if he finds out this is the word of god and then if he compares whatever matches with the thing which has been proved like this is our ruler you know we have a measuring tape once it has been confirmed this is correct then we use this as a furqan as our mizan so what is there in the old testament new testament buddhist scripture hindu scripture what matches with the quran we have got no objection excepting that is the word of god what is contrary to the quran and the sahih hadith we reject it it can't be true now what is not matching with the quran but not even contradictory it is optional do you want an optional optional means may be right may be wrong so those things which are mentioned in the bible old and new testament which match with the quran is what i quoted today 100% we have got no objection in accepting this portion as the word of god there are many things which go against the quran which i can give a talk on differences between islam and christianity there are certain things which are optional neither go against the quran is neither matching with the quran so this portion which is neither going against the quran or matching with the quran are optional for us so those writings which go against the quran i cannot accept as the word of god so all those authors of the new testament which go against the teachings of the quran i reject it what matches i say can be the word of god what doesn't match neither goes against is optional as far as a non muslim is concerned we use logic if you keep the quran aside today due to advancements of science and technology today the age of science and technology now if you use the yardstick of science and technology to the bible you will find hundreds of mistakes about the creation of the universe there's a mistake the bible says as i mentioned earlier that almighty god in genesis chapter 1 verse number 16 19 he created two great lights the greater light the sun to rule the day the lesser light the moon to rule the night so moon doesn't have a light of its own it's a contradiction it's a scientific error there are various such errors various only in genesis chapter number 1 you can find plenty errors there are mathematical contradictions there are scientific errors there is obscenity so leave aside quran even if a normal human being who keeps his mind open and reads we can surely not agree this portion can surely not be the word of god if there are scientific errors if there are contradictions if there's pornography any normal human being who has an open mind will never accept this thing to be the word of god the remaining things becomes optional so this is what we use brother as a strategy to identify so a student of comparative religion whenever he picks up a scripture he uses the strategy and he tries and reads the scripture and then he analyzes how good how authentic is the scripture brother so this if we use with the bible also you find there are many errors there are many contradictions even if you don't have the quran a normal human being cannot accept this to be the word of god as a whole but because quran says that there was a revelation given to jesus christ peace be upon him what we say that portion which matches with the quran we have got no objection in accepting as the word of god hope that answers the question <laughs>